doing today? I am. Um, <laughs> I'm coming from you to you still from the RV. One day I will be back in my office and probably pretty excited about it, quite frankly. But I'm just going to let you know that. Um, hi, thank you for being here. I wanted today's quick. I just wanted to jump in and talk about energy. Um, and when I'm talking about energy, I mean, I'm, I'm talking about how do you feel when you wake up? How do you feel at the end of the day? Um, and the whole time in between, how do you feel when you're working out? Like, um, where, where's your energy level? And uh, this, this one struck very close to home for me about, um, two minutes or two months ago. Um, and I'll tell you what, let me just, let me do one thing. It seems like Facebook wants me to change something. Um, give me one second and let's see if I can figure this out. Sorry, sorry to do this. Um, nope, nope. Hopefully, hopefully this uh, isn't dragging because sometimes uh, when I'm in the RV, even though we've got relatively decent internet, um, it, it gets a little funky. So here's the deal. Energy. About two months ago when we started this trip, I noticed that um, first it started with I wasn't sleeping as well as I normally do. And and I rely heavily on sleep. And we're going to talk about sleep because I think that's, you've heard me say it, I think it's a superpower. Um, so I rely heavily on sleep. But then I started noticing something that I've never experienced before, which is maybe 10 in the morning. I would just be like exhausted, exhausted. I just wanted to crawl into bed and put the covers over my head. And I was like, what the heck is this? Like, this doesn't make sense. And it was worrying me. It was really actually worrying me quite a bit. So I'm going to come back to that in just a second, because here's what I really want us to think about. Like when it comes to energy, um, there are a few things that play a role in it. One of them is, I think it's, well, actually the two big ones, it's either mental, like mental and emotional, or it's physical. Like those are the things that bring our energy down. Um, it's either the mental stress or something going on physically. So the first thing before we do anything, first thing is, is that get aware, get super aware. Is this something that it, like, if you're having trouble with energy, if you're having trouble, if you're, if you're like I was right, 10 o'clock in the morning, you want to just crawl back in bed or three o'clock in the afternoon or whatever it is. Um, we don't, we shouldn't be like that. Okay. And, and I can, I'm, we're going to talk about getting our energy back up. But the first thing is, is that you really want to make sure that if this is something that has been going on for a while, is it something that could be um, a medical issue? Okay. No letters behind my name, not a doctor, don't do any medical diagnosis. So like, that's the first thing. Like if this is something that's been going on for a while, get some blood work done, you know? get checked, find out what's going on with your body. I'm not really talking about that today. What I'm talking about, and, and I will say like, like we all need to have that um, baseline probably every year of, you know, our blood work and, you know, and know what we're talking about when we look at it and, um, you know, all the things checked. But outside of that is what I'm talking about. So this is when it's just, it's just not feeling it. And you know, there's nothing really wrong with you. You're not sick. Um, there's, you know, your blood work's not whacked off or anything like that. So the first thing to do is, I think, is to come in and go, okay, what is everything that's weighing on me? Okay. And weighing on me could be, could it be emotional? Are there things going on in your world that are weighing you down? I had a call with a client this week and, and she's just, she was weighed down because A, she couldn't sleep and B, there were things going on in her world that were um, emotionally difficult. So that's one thing, you know, that's something that happens and then we get over it. I'm looking at like, so what, ask yourself, like, what are the stressors in your life? What is going on physically? Okay. Um, this is something I did. So, so I started to say that, you know, I was, I was in this situation where I was out of energy and 
I'm kind of like, I mean, kind of like if you remember Winnie the Pooh, I'm kind of like the Tigger the Tiger. I don't run out of energy. I'm, I'm very fortunate, super fortunate that I just got the kind of body that likes to go. So here I am out of energy and I'm, I'm quite frankly, like freaking out. <laughs> I'm like, what's wrong with me? What's going on? So I brought it in and I went, okay, Kelly, what do you tell everyone else? Number one, awareness. So I sat down and I went, okay, what's everything that I'm doing in my world right now that's different or um, not healthy? Okay. So one thing was I wasn't sleeping. I just flat out wasn't sleeping. So that, that'll like, that takes me down right away. The next thing though, that I really got aware of was that I wasn't drinking my water. Like I'm normally very good at, you know, knocking back about, what is it? Eight, eight glasses of water a day. Like, you know, give or take a couple, but pretty much usually eight to 10. So I was like not drinking water. Part of the reason was um, when you're driving a lot, you really don't want to drink a lot of water because then you have to keep stopping to pee, right? Um, so that was an excuse. So I dialed my water back up. I noticed that I wasn't doing any of my supplements. Like they were literally in a drawer and staying there. Um, there were a couple of other things going on. One of them was I wasn't doing a lot of movement because I'm in a car and then we get somewhere and then we, you know, get all the stuff set up, take care of the dogs and fix dinner and done, right? So I wasn't moving. Um, another thing was I had quit meditating. So meditation tends to keep me um, kind of level, right? Um, I, I can easily get um, pretty excitable and emotional if I'm not keeping myself level and I wasn't meditating. So that's another thing that went on the list. Um, another thing that went on the list was it was just like a stressful environment. Okay. Um, but something else, and this was the big one that I noticed, and, and this is where I want to go first, is food. When I'm at home, I have a very consistent way of eating during the week. Um, and part of that does not include any sort of breads or, you know, those kinds of things for breakfast. It's just don't do it. Well, for like a week, we had been going to bagels every morning. <laughs> now, I don't mind bagels. I'll eat a bagel once every three or four months but three or four or five days in a row. And what I was realizing was that in eating that bagel, it, it, was, it was spiking my insulin, I think. Um, and so I was just literally crashing about mm, half an hour, 45 minutes after um, eating the bagel. And I hadn't thought about it. I had not put two, two, two together. It's not like I don't teach a, teach a, like a whole course around sugar freedom, but like one of the things I'd always notice is when we do sugar freedom, people will say, um, usually it's about the second weekend, I have more energy. And the more energy comes from less sugar, less processed foods, better sleep, which happens when you, when you lose the sugar, and, and then not the stuff in the morning. Like our breakfast foods are a little funky. Like if you think about it, cereal um, or breads, bagels, Kelly. Um, and so, so with this whole list, Okay, with this whole list, I said, okay, what can I control? Like there are certain things I can't control right now. Um, I can't control, I can't control the long sitting, but I can control the movement. So that's the next piece. First, it's like, it's looking at getting awareness. Second, it's, um, and when I say awareness, like look at all the things that are going on in your world. Do you need to go to the doctor and get blood work? If not, what else is going on? We're gonna talk about emotional in a minute. But um, what's going on? Write it all down. What can you deal with? If you're not drinking your water, dehydration will make us tired. Okay. So make sure that you're you know, make sure you're drinking enough water. Um, but the next thing that makes us tired, we'll come back to the food. But the next thing that makes us tired is not moving. Right. Years ago, people used to say to me, "Well, if I do all that exercise, I'm going to be tired." And I would say, actually, if you do all that exercise, you won't be tired. Now, there's a fine line, okay? There's a line that says, um, I have just really, really exerted myself. 
I have really exerted myself and now I'm physically tired. Um, I was on a bike ride with some friends this week and we were talking about years ago, all of us did a training together, um, a, a long bike ride training. So we would, we would ride the, we'd do these bike rides on the weekends and they would be anywhere from 40 to 65 miles, something like that um, on the training. Well, what we all noticed was that as, we, as our distance went up, we would get to the end of that ride. We'd go home and everybody was just like a zombie. We were zombied out because our bodies were physically tired. So that's not the kind of movement I'm looking for. I'm looking for the kind of movement that energizes you. Is it the, is it the mobility we talk about? Is it a good walk somewhere? Um, is it, you know, a workout with, with weights or bands or body weight or whatever it, all of those things contribute to energy. They don't take away. Now, there's, like I just said, there's that point there where usually it depends on everybody, but usually somewhere about an hour and a half. Um, let's say you're going for a long hike. After about an hour and a half, you do start really depleting your energy unless you're very, very, very cognizant of what you're taking in. Are you taking in enough calories as you go? Are you taking in the electrolytes as you go? You know, and this is, this is a conversation for a different time, but just think about yourself. If you're tired, get out and do some moving. Um, if you're, if you have no energy, look at your food. Are you eating the kind of things that give you like protein, protein, Kelly? Um, I'm not still not the greatest with protein, but, um, better at it than I used to be. So, you know, eat those things that are calorie dense. They're, um, if they're carbs, they're, you know, they're the non-processed, they're the really good things that are for you, like the beans and the the healthy, there, there are healthy breads out there, right? Like a really good solid piece of bread uh, with some, maybe some cheese if you eat cheese or something to, to kind of mitigate um, all the carbs and add some protein to it. But give yourself some of those kinds of things. Uh, another one that you need to look at or that we should look at is, is stress. Okay, let's talk about stress for just a second. Stress is probably Stress is part of life, okay? We have things that happen in our lives all day long that will spike our stress. It just does. Like I, I use the aura ring and all day long I can see like when I hit a stress point or when I don't. Like that's life, right? Life happens. But what is the killer of our energy is that low grade underlying eats at our stomach liner stress that we can't do anything about or we don't do anything about. And that stress could be anything from, um, I don't know, if, if you were to look online and they would say, and say, you know, what kind of stress is bad for you? A lot of times they'll say work stress, but work stress isn't the only kind of stress, guys. It's the stuff that you can't control. That's where we really get into stress that, that really gets us. So, and there's, there's a lot of stresses in our lives that we can't control. Other people, um, outside environments, work environments, um, inside environments. Like there are certain things that we can't control. So the only way to deal with those is to find the de-stressors that work for you. Could be simply the deep breathing, right? Like um, I've mentioned this before on other uh, lives, but the super, like the simplest deep breathing ever is what they would call a box breath. And a box breath is when you would breathe in, like. I'm not going to do it because uh, you can figure this one out, but I'll just, I'll explain it to you. So let's say you take a deep breath in to the count of four or five. You hold it to the count of four or five. You release it to the count of four or five. And then you wait to take that next breath to the count of four or five. And change your count if you need to, right? This is not about like trying to hold your breath um, or anything like that. It's really about get in a rhythm that is very consistent in your breathing and only, you know, like do it for two minutes, three minutes. You don't have to do this for hours, but you'll notice that when you do it, it does like it brings, it brings the stress down. It's also something that is good to do before you go to sleep because it can like bring the stress down. Other things that you can do, like this is a, this is an interesting one. You might think I'm crazy, but look it up. So another thing you can do is just take your 
<laughs> I'm backwards in the in the uh, video today. So take your finger. This this finger doesn't have a fingernail right now, um, or not much of one. Put it inside your ear, so that you're kind of pressing down on the inside of the ear, below the uh, ear canal, and then just move it like very slowly in a semicircle or in a circle rather. And you know you do it for maybe 20 seconds, and then you reverse it. Um, what this does is it actually relaxes your parasympathetic nervous system. So that is a that is a nice way of just like bringing it down. Um, another thing you can do if you don't want to stick your finger in your ear, you can um, find, so you've got this bone right here, right behind the bone is kind of an indentation. Once again, you just rub on that gently. It's not a hard rub. This is not a massage. This is just a, a gentle rub. And maybe do it for 30 seconds a minute one way and then the other way. Once again, it's a way of lowering your stress. The other thing that does is that gives you awareness, right? When we when we stop and we breathe or we, you know, rub to calm down, you know, our parasympathetic nervous system or whatever it is, it brings us back to what we talked about in the very beginning, which is awareness. Um, so with awareness, we actually get power, okay? Awareness gives us power. And when I say power, what I mean is power over our lives. So for myself, coming back to my story at the very beginning, when I sat down, because I was <laughs> I was not a relaxed animal at that moment in my life, because I'm thinking, what's wrong with me? I'm going crazy. I'm not going to be able to exist like this. This is, you know, this is not working, kids. Um, so I just wrote down everything. And I said, what on this list can you manage? So on that list was I wasn't drinking water. I could manage my water intake. Um, on that list was the fact that I was eating bagels for breakfast every morning. <laughs> I could manage that. And, and, and I didn't like, it wasn't a deprivation thing. Uh, I know the next day, Bill wanted to go have bagels. And I went, mm, okay, you can have a bagel. Um, I want a quarter of a bagel. <laughs> He's like, what do you want? I said, I want a quarter of a bagel with extra cream cheese on it. This is after I had something, to, you know, for breakfast because I needed to settle down, you know, get my system set up. And then, you know, I enjoyed a half a bagel or a quarter of a bagel, actually. Put that cream cheese on it. I was done. Um, so I could control what I ate. I could also control my um, supplements, right? I had just gotten out of the habit. So I could control that. Um, the other thing I could control was my stress. I could control my stress by bringing meditation back into my life, by doing the deep breathing, by, you know, rubbing on my ears. Um, all of those things were things that I could manage. And in fact, I thought that the only thing that would make a difference is sleeping more. But since I wasn't managing that well, I had to manage all the other things that I could manage which in turn actually started making the sleep a little bit better. So as soon as, as soon as you bring all those things together, what happens is that then you'll start tracking your energy. Okay. Because it's, it's easy when you feel good to forget how it was when you didn't feel good. And so it's a good idea to say, okay, like, and this doesn't have to be a big journal thing. Grab a post-it note. Um, which is exactly what I did. I was like, okay, wait, my energy is in the toilet. Um, at 10 o'clock in the morning, I want to go to bed. So a week later, how's the energy? Oh, guess what? You know, at 10 o'clock in the morning, I'm rocking and rolling and, you know, doing my thing. So control the things that you can control. Um, bring in movement, bring in better food, um, lower the sugar and carbs, processed carbs, and bring in a little stress reduction. And those kinds of things, if you do them consistently, what you're going to find is that if you look back in a week, two weeks, whatever it is, you will see a difference in your energy levels. So I want to hear from you. Can you let me know if you've tried any of these things? Um, can you let me know if you're going to try any of these things? I am off for the next week. Uh, when I when I finish this call, I'm going to head over to Kalispell, pick up... Um, a group of eight women and we're heading to Glacier National Park for a week of hiking. So I'm off for a week. I'll probably drop in with a picture of the girls or the women and 
I want to tell everyone, everyone who's online, thank you. Thank you for being here. Um, let me know. Let me know where your energy levels are now. Like on a one, two, three, four, five, are you a five or are you a one? And are you going to try some of these things to see if they can make a difference? So thanks again. Have a wonderful, wonderful week, wonderful, wonderful day. And I will see you next Tuesday.